so he's released from prison and uh, and then it moves straight straight on to his next victim, Maybe. Michelle, yeah. who we've got uh, on <laughs> Skype now from uh, from America. Morning, Michelle. So, uh, so um, hiya. What so what job did he tell you he'd done and what name did he use? He gave me the name of Liam Allen, um, which I have found now that he always uses a ploy of his real name. Um, he told me his name was Guillaume, um, but he went by Liam, which is still William, no matter what. Um, he told me that he was working in medical records and that he built um, electronic medical records for small businesses. That's the initial story he told me. As time went on, he had to sit me down and he told me, my job isn't exactly what my job is. That he actually worked for the MOD um, and he worked kind of like in personal security. He would shuttle foreign dignitaries, embassy workers between New York and, and Washington, DC, um, sometimes doing personal protection for their families if they were visiting. Um, and he said he used the medical records business as kind of a way to gain personal information on people that he was asked to get information on. And you also became pregnant uh, by him. Um, so at what point did you become suspicious? Because again, these moments of him disappearing, he suddenly, he disappeared one Christmas, you, could, you didn't know where he was. When did you first suspect something? When did you find out that things weren't what they seemed? Uh, the, uh, literally about um, a week or two after I found out that I was pregnant, he never leaves his belongings behind. And one day he left his wallet um, on a counter and some kind of women's intuition told me to look into it. And when I did, I found an identification card that said William Allen Jordan. Um, about a week later, I of course get, did a Google search and looked up that name and article after article after article from the UK came up about all his nefarious crimes there. I found Mary's website and contacted her that day. Well, there is now this support yeah. group. You all support each other on, uh, on, on Facebook. And I know that you then set about secret camera um, work with, uh, uh, with Michelle, uh, who the, he then confessed what had happened. Uh, he was then busted again. Um, and, and it turns out that he's taken about £300,000 at least at from least. 21 women in five countries. He was uh, now last year released from prison and he's now quickly in pursuit of another victim because she's contacted you as well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not just one. Yes. There's, there's, there's numerous. Yeah. There's numerous many. Companies. And so, so what? What is it about him? Because, like you said, he's not doing this for the money. I mean, you believe you believe that he is a psychopath. I, I believe he's a psychopath. He, he's a psychopath. Somebody who's no conscience, no remorse, no chemical empathic response to other people. So, to him, we're all Sims characters. We're just people to be manipulated. It's like a cat playing with mice. Just, it, you know, it's not personal. It's just. It's so just what he does. Just it's continue. just who he is. He'll just continue nature. to do this. Yes, he will never stop. I mean, putting him in prison or, you know, will we'll not stop him. It will just, you know, delay him for a little time. And how has it left you feeling, Michelle? Um, I was, I felt very relieved that I was able to get him off the streets because he was out on bail and within two weeks he already had two new victims. And if it wasn't for the fact that it was covered very heavily in my local media, um, they would never have found out about him. So. I mean, I keep pursuing it here on the state side because I know that he is a sexual predator. He always targets single mothers. Um, and of course he has that, that history of molesting, molesting a child in the past. And I think that's why he purposely targets single mothers because he uses the children as pawns and it's so devious. So I like to keep the awareness out there just because so also, so other victims cannot feel so alone because yeah. I know myself, I felt intense shame and disappointment. And if it wasn't for the fact that Mary had been there, done that, and was able to come through the other side, okay, she was such an amazing support. I would be a completely broken and lost soul right now yeah, thank, if thank, it wasn't for the support of those girls. Thank goodness oh, you've got that Facebook absolutely. group and, and well done, hopefully you. it will help the other victims. And you know, as you said, you know that there, there will be others. Uh, my online nightmare. Uh, your story was on last Wednesday, I think, but it's on another story uh, this Wednesday at 10 on Channel 4. And thank you both thank very you. much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's lovely to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right.